Hi, uh, welcome to this particular module. Uh, in the last module, what we have seen, we have seen uh, uh, how to fabricate a flexible force sensor right using a PDMS and P dot PSS as a strain gauge material. So, strain gauge uh, P dot PSS we are using PDS PSS uh, is a conducting polymer uh, and it has a very high gauge factor compared to uh, a metal. So, how to uh, pattern P dot PSS we have seen then how to create gold contacts for the uh, strain gauge that we have seen and then how to create a bump and attach a bump and finally, realize the sensor by uh, by peeling off the uh, PDMS from the substrate and the substrate was silicon right. Now, uh, once you have this sensor ready then you have to attach this sensor on 5 sides of a bid and that bid we have connected to the catheter. Now, how to calibrate it, how to uh, get the values that when you are applying a force right how the sensor uh, uh, performs, what is the output of the sensor right. So, for that we will see the uh, some of the experiments today. Uh, so, if you see the screen what you see is <coughs> there is a micro manipulator, micro manipulator. This we will actually see when we will uh, have a tour to the fab lab and I uh, that will be part of this particular uh, course where you will be shown uh, micro manipulator its performance its operation uh, in the laboratory. And it is extremely important tool because we have to um, uh, indent the tissue or we have to uh, indent the force sensor to get uh, the to, to evaluate its performance right. Uh, it, it is used in many applications um, uh, we will we will see we will talk about it when we will go to the uh, fab lab uh, it is a class 10,000 non conventional clean room for characterizing uh, the sensors that we fabricate in a actual uh, conventional clean room environment. Uh, so, we have the uh, a series of uh, uh, lectures for you guys uh, to see how to work in a class 10,000 uh, clean room what kind of precautions you should take, what kind of equipment uh, are generally there in the clean room, uh, what is bio safety hood, uh, what is a peristatic pump, uh, how the manipulator can be operated, how the impedance analyzer can be operated right, uh, uh, how, how are the uh, how is the oven uh, uh, operated, how you can form the PDMS uh, from the silicon mold. So, this everything will be covered uh, uh, as, a, as a part of this course uh, and, and we, will, uh, we will show it to you uh, uh, in reality how it looks like right. So, it is very important to connect your theory to the experiment part, so that you can correlate what we are learning here and how the system looks like right. So, since all the things that I have talked we will be talking in our uh, course uh, whether it is micro manipulator or it is your my, uh, or it is your impedance analyzer or it is your peristatic pump or it is your incubator or it is a bio safety hood because everything we will be using right. So, uh, uh, we will we'll see when it uh, when the time comes right now if you see we have a commercial force sensor uh, connected to the micro manipulator and then with that commercial force sensor we are moving the micro manipulator down like this and we have this flexible force sensor. So, when we apply a force here right the, the sensor would change its output right sensor would change its resistance because it is a strain gauge. So, we have developed an electronic module so that the value of the strain gauge can be converted into voltage and that is why wherever you see the plot that we have uh, uh, the plot that you can see here is compression force compression force versus versus sensor output voltage right. So, you can see here uh, the compressive force uh, and versus the sensor output voltage. Here you can also see that we have used the uh, we have we have we have fitted the curve and the R square value is close to 0.9872 that means, uh, the sensor output is linear right it is a linear uh, result. Same way uh, uh, we have used when it is f x that is the x direction when we are uh, forcing in a y direction. So, you can see here x y and z 
right. So, x direction when we force uh, uh, apply force when we apply in y direction and we apply in the z direction. For all these three uh, uh, forces we have corresponding results uh, from the output of the sensor. So, you can see sensor output voltage for your f y right and again you can see r square value 0 0.9984 for your f z right uh, again you have compression force versus your uh, voltage compression force is given in newtons. So, that is one thing. Now, calculated contact force versus sensor output voltage. So, now if I keep on applying force what is the on how the sensor output would change. So, you can see here from 0 to about 4 close to 4 or close to 3 uh, grams the sensor will not is not able to uh, uh, you know it is almost like point from 0 to 4 or 0 to 3 uh, the sensor is not so sensitive right. About 3 and above the sensor will start showing the change in output voltage. You can see here 0 0.2 volt uh, from 0 to 4 is almost like uh, minimum right. So, so and, and we do not worry we, we do not have to worry about this particular force in fact until this force we do not have to worry because the optimum force is 40 grams right optimum force is 40 gram during surgery. So, what we see is uh, until 5 grams of force we have about 0.4 and it is not really linear, but you consider from 5 grams and above it is it is linear right. So, as you increase the force the sensor output voltages and there is a linear relationship between the force and the sensor output above 5 grams right or 5 grams and onwards. So, that is that is one thing that we can see here. Second thing is calculated contact force versus measured contact force. So, uh, if we already know how much force we are applying because we have a commercial force sensor here right. So, we know what is the uh, uh, calculated contact force and uh, correspondingly what we are measuring. So, for 10 gram is it matching you have to see like this close to 10 gram right 20 grams somewhere here right 20 grams is that is you can see here right and 30 grams 30 grams like this. Hmm. So, uh, calculated force versus measure, measure force you can again see uh, a quite linear relationship with r square value of 0.9981 right. So, this is uh, uh, we can see that it, it, it works very well. Uh, another thing that you can see here uh, we have used a force sensor MDB 2.5 which is a transistor technique from United States uh, and there is a metal stick. Uh, and this is a gelatin box right this is a gelatin metal box. So, we are pressing this force sensor against gelatin and getting the results. Same thing what we have done we have connected the catheter we have connected the catheter and we are forcing the catheter against the gelatin and we are collecting the results right. So, we are uh, comparing our results with the commercially available force sensor right and uh, uh, when we apply different forces let us say 5 gram force right uh, we start applying 5 gram force and then we stop at certain point it will come back to its original stage. Uh, but the there is a uh, for, for 5 grams the output voltage is different for 40 grams is different for 60 grams is different you can clearly see that the sensor can be used from uh, 5 grams to 60 grams and it shows uh, uh, on off time can show on off time and it is when you apply a force 60 gram it becomes saturate it is not continuously increasing continuously increasing then it is very difficult to uh, get the understand the, the performance of the sensor. So, here what we can see is uh, the sensor can be utilized to understand its uh, uh, performance by calibrating it uh, with respect to the commercially available force sensor. Now, this is another thing that we have uh, uh, measured and that is what I told you is in reality the catheter would be inserted in the uh, uh, in the body and there is a flow of blood right. So, it the data that we obtain from the flow of blood should be neglected and the data that we get only from the sensor uh, uh, only when the sensor is touching the uh, tissue uh, should be taken into account. So, for that we what we have done is we have uh, sensor 1 here, sensor 2 here there are 2 sensors here and then there is a water uh, this is a x, uh, x direction and then there is a z direction you can see here 
right. Uh, uh, so, what we have done? We have moved the sensor in x uh, direction and um, uh, z direction. So, we have we have dipped the sensor in this direction and we, uh, we, we saw what are the results. So, if you see this sensor, there are two sensors attached, right. One sensor is in this particular, uh, uh, it is at the bottom of the catheter, uh, 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 bottom of the bid and second sensor is on the uh, side of the catheter bid. So, if you see uh, for sensor 1 and sensor 2, we have different results. However, just uh, uh, looking at the results, what we see is F z 1 and F y 2. So, F z 1 is your F z 1 is this one and F y 2 is your this one right, because for this one is z, but for this one it will be y right. This is a normal force to this strain gauge, it is a uh, uh, y directional force or a shear force to uh, this particular sensor right. Uh, what I mean is you apply a force like this, it's normal force but if a force is coming in this direction, it is kind of shear force right. So, we are measuring the normal and shear forces or force in different direction uh, to be precise. Uh, so, F z and F y 2, we have the results right. We can clearly see that when there is a F z force, this sensor will be more sensitive compared to this sensor. Same way F z 2, uh, that is the when we apply the force in this direction, which will be directly pressuring the sensor uh, here right, uh, it is way higher compared to F x 1 which is the force in this particular direction. Thus, what we are just measuring is uh, what kind of uh, data we can obtain when the sensor is moved inside the water and what will be the flow uh, when we actually uh, uh, put the sensor in the heart, we have to study that. We have to also change the design of this sensor like I said right. So, uh, uh, the, the idea uh, of this particular module to show it to you uh, was that we can design a flexible force sensor, we can obtain the data using flexible force sensor, but we have to uh, uh, optimize our design, we have to improve our design to actually use it uh, in, in, in the surgery right. Uh, but these are the preliminary results that we have obtained and uh, from this we get a confidence that uh, using the uh, strain gauge and P dot PSS material as a strain gauge, we can uh, measure different forces right. So, uh, uh, this is all about uh, the uh, using the uh, 3D MAMS base force sensor for catheter contact force sensing. So, what we have learned in these three modules is that you can uh, design a flexible force sensor or any other sensor uh, using micro engineering. Second is what is atrial fibrillation third is what is a tool to cure atrial fibrillation, fourth is how the surgery is performed, what is electrical mapping and then how the another catheter is inserted when you are performing ablation, fifth is when you uh, want to fabricate a flexible force sensor or any sensor you have to get you have to calibrate it and then you have to see its performance by considering all the possible scenarios that you will be uh, that you have to uh, take into consideration when you are uh, co comparing the actual catheter when it is uh, placed or it is used uh, inside the body right. So, uh, this is about the uh, catheter contact force sensing uh, for, for uh, atrial fibrillation. Now, the topic is smart catheters. So, how you can make it smarter? How you can make it smarter? You can you, you we already talked about making it smarter by using uh, electrical uh, mapping because there is a catheter which is lying inside that tomb when tome opens the catheter will come out, it will do electrical mapping, it can go in, tome closes, it can be used for ablation. So, doing multiple things is smarter, is smarter catheter. Force sensing ability uh, will be a smarter catheter. Another ability would be tactile sensing. When a surgeon is operating this catheter, can a surgeon feel the force right. So, that is a feeling of that force will be the tactile sensing. If you have tactile sensing on the force on the contact uh, for along with contact force sensing, then this catheter operation uh, would be uh, easier most probably and uh, of course, the catheter is smarter because it can not only uh, show you the uh, force that you are uh, applying, but also you can feel that force 
right. So, how can you now develop a tactile sensor? I leave it on you. Now, you know how to uh, perform a microfabrication, how to uh, use photolithography and uh, try, try a few ideas. Again, in all these things that we have discussed, if you are stuck somewhere, if you have questions, if you have queries, uh, you should and you I insist you to ask us using the forum, right. Your queries would be answered to the best of our abilities and uh, uh, feel free to learn more, right. Feel free to learn more, get a novel ideas and try to implement those ideas at least in terms of uh, uh, designing the process flow for fabricating a particular sensor, right. So, uh, having said that, uh, we will be looking at uh, other applications related to clinical uh, research or clinical relevance uh, of our uh, MAM space sensors or microfabrication. Uh, till then, uh, you just go through this particular module and previous two modules to understand the complete concept. Uh, I will see you in the next class. Take care.